Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be looking at animations in SwiftUI. So in SwiftUI we're able to animate changes to our view's local state i.e. if we wanted the colour of our box to change between two colours SwiftUI can handle this. Let's actually look at a simple example of this and how we can do this now. So first of all let's actually create a button and create a source of truth that will be used to toggle between our two colours. So what we have here is we just have our state property and this is going to be our source of truth for this view to dictate whether our button is green or not. So within our VStack we've got our button which will toggle between turning it green or not and we're using the new iOS 15 button styles to just style our buttons to get the default um, you know, new system styles that are available to us and if you want to learn more about this then you want to check out my video iOS 15 button styles and materials in SwiftUI. So what we're going to do now is actually add in a rectangle and change the color based on whether this property here is green or not. Now when you're working with animations and trying to animate these changes you may think that you need to do something like this. So we'll get onto this if statement in a second but what you're actually able to do in SwiftUI to animate changes is you're able to use the with animation block closure which will animate any changes but to views that are affected by that property. So what we want to do is actually use this animation block on our is green toggle. So let's actually just wrap this in the with animation block. So if you just start typing with animation you'll see the option here. And you'll also see there's another option here as well where we can actually pass in what type of animation we want and we'll get onto this a bit later. So we want to actually put our is green within our with animation block like so. So let's actually see if this works. So if I hit turn green, you'll notice that even within our with animation block, our button is animating as you can see, but our rectangle isn't animating and why is this? Well, what's actually going on here is we're not actually changing our rounded rectangle's local view state. We're basically saying that if it is green, I want you to show this rectangle or else show this rectangle. So we're actually creating new rectangles every single time. We're not actually modifying the rounded rectangle's local view state. But if you actually look at our button, we're not doing an if statement. Instead, we're using a ternary operator and saying that if this is green, I want you to change the text on this button to turn red or else turn the text to turn green. So we're actually modifying the button's local view state as opposed to creating a brand new button every single time. So SwiftUI knows that I want you to animate this change. And if you want to learn more about this, then check out my video breaking down SwiftUI. So what we need to do is actually modify our rounded rectangles local view state instead of creating new rectangles every time. So let's do that now you can see that we're saying on our rounded rectangle that we're saying that we want the fill to change whether depending on if is green is true or not. So if it is green, then I want you to be green or else be red. So now if we tap this button, you can see that our view actually animates the changes for the color on our Swift UI view, which is perfect. So just going back to the with animation block here, so what we're saying here within this closure is that I want you to animate any views that are affected by this variable here. So if you look at our views that are affected by this, we've got our button and we've also got our rounded rectangles fill modifier as well. But what we're actually able to do on this with animation block is we're actually able to specify an animation curve. The animation curve is the type of animation that we want to occur. So by default, we just get this like linear effect. But what we could do if we wanted to is we could actually change that animation. So if you just create a parenthesis on the with animation block and just hit the dot notation, you'll see that you actually have all these different options that you can use for the animation. So the one we want to use for now is let's just say ease in and out to see the difference. So now if we hit turn green, you might not notice it, but I do. <laughs> but what's happening happening here is it's actually easing in the color change and then when it goes out and changes, it's, it's slower. So you can actually specify and change the animation curve that you want. So now what I wanna do is add in another button, but this time rather than that changes the color a bit, I want it to actually minimize this view. So let's create a new source of truth that will handle expanding and minimizing our 
red view. So we've got our is minimized property now that will define whether our box is minimized or not on our view. So within our button, what we now want to do is create a new button that will handle this action. So I'm going to just add this in and then we'll break it down. Now we've got another button here that says is minimized and it changes the text depending on whether the box is minimized or not. And then this time, rather than us using our default that we had before like so, what we're saying now is we're actually specifying that we want this specifically to be a spring animation. So a spring animation curve is a animation that's kind of just like, you know, what it says, a spring, it has like a velocity and a bounce towards it. So what we're going to do now is add in another property on our rounded rectangle called scale effect. And then this modifier is going to change the scale of this view based on whether it's minimized or not. So let's do that now. So what we're saying here is that on our scale effect that if the view is minimized, so if minimized is true, then we want to shrink this to half the size, which is 0.5, or else we want it to go back to one, which is original identity size. So let's actually just see what happens. So if I turn this green, you'll see, you know, it turns green. So that's all working fine. And if I hit on minimize, you'll see now that our view minimizes as well. So we can change the size of it like so. But I don't know if you realize this, but both of our, both of our buttons are still animating. What about if I actually didn't want these buttons to animate at all? And I just wanted them to just, you know, have a hard switch between them. I don't want this animation to be included. Well, what we'd have to do is actually take out our web animation blocks and instead use the animation modifier directly onto the views that we want to animate. So let's actually see how we can do this now. So let's actually take out our web animation. And this time, because we don't want our button to be animated, we only want our rounded rectangle to be animated. We're going to apply the animation modifier only onto our rounded rectangle. So let's do that now. So when you're adding the animation modifier, you'll see that you actually have two options. So let's say if we were to use this option here, like so, I'll just type out and then break it down. So let's say if we use this option here, this is actually wrong. And the reason why this is wrong is because what we're saying here is that we want you to perform an animation, a spring animation, whenever any of our views, local view state changes. So whenever either one of these two changes, what's going to happen is it's going to animate all the views that are affected by those properties. And if you actually look at it, all of our views are affected by these properties. So instead, what we want to do is actually use the new function available to us that allows us to specify what animation we want to happen when a value changes. So if we just say value, and then in our value here, we're going to say is green, you'll now see what we're saying here is that we only want you to perform this animation whenever is green changes. And when is green changes, so whenever the color changes, we actually don't want a spring effect. What we want is an ease in and out. So let's just say is, let's just say ease in and out. So let's actually test this out and see what happens. So if I hit the turn green button, you'll see that it actually animates our turn green. And if you look at our button, it's actually not animating anymore because we're saying that we only want to animate our rounded rectangle. But what would happen if I tapped on minimize? So it is shrinking our view, but we don't actually have an animation anymore. So why is this? Well, I remember what I said. We said here that we only want to animate with an ease in and out whenever is green changes. So we've not actually specified that we want to perform any animations whenever it's minimized changes. So what we need to do is actually add on another animation modifier to specify this. So let's duplicate this. And then rather than animation being ease in and out, we just want this to be spring. And then rather than our value being is green, we want this to be a spring whenever is minimized changes. So whenever is green changes, we'll get an ease and out on any views that are affected by this value. And when is minimized changes, we'll get a spring animation whenever views that are affected by this property changes. So now if we just look at this, our green and red animates nicely. And also on our minimized, you can now see that we have our animation again. So just briefly, I just want to go over if we want to actually add a delay and change the speed of our animation as well too. 
Well, when you're working with Animation Curve, you're actually able to add in a delay and also change the speed of your animation as well on them specifically. So what we're going to do is on our minimize, we're going to actually increase the speed a bit and also add a bit of a delay. So let's do that now. So to do that, after your spring, you want to do dot and you'll see an option called delay. Now we'll go through the repeat options in the next bit of this video. So let's just actually go through delay first of all, and then we're going to add a delay of half a second. And then we're going to also add a speed of a quarter of a second. So what we're saying here is that we want you to have a spring animation that has a delay of half a second. And we also want the speed of the animation to be a quarter of a second as well. So let's actually see what this looks like. So if I actually tap minimize, you'll see that it's not doing it straight away. It's waiting half a second and then it's actually minimizing it at a speed of 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is actually making it slower. So now if we actually tap maximize, you'll see that we have that delay and again it increases and we still get our spring animation like so. So that's a nice way that you can actually control your animation curve specifically and we'll also go over this again in a future video called animation curves in Swift UI. So you'll probably want to subscribe to the channel and check that out as well. So we've looked at how animations work and how we can use them in Swift UI. But one last thing I want to touch on is how we can use animations that repeat and we're going to create a sync spinner so we can actually see how the repeat modifier works in Swift UI with animations. So first of all, let's create a Swift UI view called sync view. And then within this, we're going to add an SF symbol onto the screen. And if you want to learn more about SF symbols, then check out my video, SF symbols in Swift UI. So what we have here is an SF symbol, which is just the, you know, this circle path that looks like a sync icon. And then we're setting this symbol variant to be fill and also a circle, so we get a circle fill as well. And then we're setting the foreground style to be blue, and we're also changing and setting the font of it to be large style to increase the size of it. So what we wanna do is actually create a source of truth that will control our image spinning on the screen. So let's add this in now. So what we have here is a Boolean, and this is going to dictate whether our image should be spinning or not. So by default, it's going to be false, but what we want to do is that as soon as this view appears onto the screen, we actually want to set this to true. And in order to do that, we can use the on appear modifier directly onto our image view. So let's do that now. So what we're saying here is that as soon as this image appears on the screen, we just want you to toggle the value within it. So we could do something like this, or we could just manually explicitly say that we want a syncing to be equal to true. So even one of the two is valid. So now what we want to do is actually add in a modifier to animate the rotation of our view. So in order to do this, we need to use a modifier called rotation effect. So I'm going to add this in and then break it down. So what rotation effect allows us to do is specify the degrees that we want our view to be rotated by. And in this case, we're saying that if it is a syncing, we want to animate this moving from zero to 360 degrees. So do a whole circle uh, lap or else if it isn't syncing, then we want it to just be zero. So finally, we need to actually add in our animation modifier and tell our view to animate and repeat itself forever. So to make this cleaner, rather than us having this animation directly in our Swift UI body, we're going to create a computer property so we can easily see our rotation animation outside of the body of our view. So I'm going to type this out and then break it down. So what we've got here is a computer property called rotation animation. And within this animation computer property, we're returning that we want it to be a linear animation that lasts for one second. And we also want it to repeat forever. And we don't ever want it to auto reverse. So what auto reverse means is that once the animation is completed, then it will go back to its original starting point, which is what we don't want. We just want it to have a continuous syncing like loop like so. So now we need to actually use this animation and depending on the state it's syncing, we want to change the animation type. So let's actually type this one out together. So what we want to do here below our rotation effect is we want to say is that in our animation block, we just want to use the rotation animation and then we want the value of it to change depending on it's syncing like so. Okay, cool. So now if we actually run this and see what happens, 
So you'll notice now that this actually isn't working. Now, the reason why I think this isn't working is because we need to actually apply this image and actually put it within some kind of um, stack. So what you wanna do is within your body, we wanna create a V stack like so. And then you want to copy your whole image and make sure that you have your rotation effect and your animation within that V stack. And then you want to apply the on appear onto your V stack rather than your image. So your image should have the rotation effect and the animation. And now when your SwiftUI preview updates, you'll see that it is working. So you can see here that we get the animation. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not too sure why it needs to be in a V stack specifically, but if you do, then I'd love to hear what you have to say about it if you put that in the comment section below. So now you can see that this is working and it's all good. We now have this sync animation that, you know, is continuous. Now, one thing I wanna do before we wrap up is I just wanna show you how changing the animation curve can actually affect this animation. So let's say for example now, if we change the animation from linear, which is remember it's a straight line. If we change this to ease in and out, you'll now notice that our animation curve changes and it's still continuous, but this time we almost have a little bit of a pause and that's because with the ease in and out, there's like a sharp stop. There's like a small stop at the end of the animation curve. So one thing to be wary of when you're working with animations and animation curves is that depending on what you're working with, it can actually completely change the animation in terms of how it looks. So you might want to test it out with a few different um, animation curves to make sure that you get the right one. Okay, so that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.